with so much with the energy, sexual energy that go right down into the to the spine. Yeah. No, it's fine. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see here the lumbar plexus here. There's so many branches of nerve also connecting down here to the sacrum and down here to the to the from here also have dialect to the sexual organ and here go to the sacrum from the second go to the sexual organ. So what I wanted to show you are just a few basic techniques for opening up the, the lumbar sacral area and also some thoracic um, innervations too. Basically what we're looking at here is once you've done the work to loosen up the fibrosis and the adhesions and the lesions that are based in the spine from blockages to circulation or maybe a subluxated spine, majority of people have some degree of what's called subluxation or a rotation or a twist in the vertebrae. Any chiropractors here? Osteopaths? Okay, I'm osteopathic trained, so what you're going to get is naturopathy and osteopathic techniques. And these are very simple, and I'm going to show you some techniques where if you don't use too much force, you really can't hurt someone. You have to keep in mind and keep your presence that if it's somebody who's very fragile, like an elderly lady who may have some osteoporosis, you definitely don't want to use any pressure. Anyone who has a severe problem there, avoid it altogether. You know, you're not trained to go in and do any major corrective techniques that may harm that, that individual. So just keep that in mind when you're working on it. But as Master T has said, you have the nerve supply that comes, let's look at this as being the tree of life, right? Up here being the head of the tree, you have all the branches that go out and through that feed the life force through the nervous system. And you can look at each one of the organs and the glands and the brain as being the fruit of that tree. Now what can happen, which is very important, is any time there's a slight rotation, it could be from an injury, it could be from posture, it could be from mineral deficiency, it could be from a variety of reasons, and it may be a temporary or it may be chronic. And the vertebrae can even fuse together and they're very difficult to, to move back into position when you get that kind of fusion. If they've had surgery, it's going to be even more difficult. You know, that should be the last resort, right? Most of all, do no harm. So this can prevent multitudes of surgeries. But once you've gone in, opened up all, a lot of the blockages through the deep tissue work, then it's going to be much easier to move these vertebrae back in place because usually they've come become out of position and rotated and putting pressure on the nerves that feed the various organs, glands, and all parts of the body. Um, by the rotation is blocking it. It's called shunting it, where it's blocking the energy flow. So what you want to do is open up that energy flow. Now the reason a lot of these are out of place, as I mentioned, all the other reasons, but particularly when you're doing that deep tissue work, you're releasing the ligaments and the attachments next to the vertebrae, particularly the, the spinous process, which are the outside, the transverse process, and they're pulling and tugging them out of place. A lot of people could go to a chiropractor and he's going to crack, pop you, and you walk outside and get in your car, turn yourself to one side and it's going to go right back out because the innervation is still there, the tension is still there in that vertebrae. So you've released that, so what's going to happen when you do some of these techniques is it can just open up the flow immediately. So I just want to show you quickly a few things you can do and you want to always make sure you can look at the malleolus, these are the ankle bones, and get an idea. Many times the subluxation in the vertebrae, as they call it, or the rotation, can be due to a short leg. Majority of times it's not. When you see one leg shorter than the other down here, he's slightly higher on this left side, it's because the pelvis is slightly rotated. When you get that rotation, what do you have? you have pressure on those nerves coming out from the spinal cord feeding the whole rest of the body. So what you want to do is release that. So basically I look here and see he's not too far off and uh, the right side is just a little bit higher. So one thing you can do is just loosen up the fixation in the femur pelvic joint, right? And just a slight tug. Also, you're going to adjust many of the bones down here, the talus and the calcaneus and the other bones in the foot in the process. Go to the other side and just give a nice slight tug. Okay, many times they'll feel the, uh, either a, uh, a slight 
adjustment in the ankle or possibly up here in the hip bones. Okay. So the next technique, I'd like for you to bend your knees, please, and put your feet flat. Now, when you have a lot of fixations and a lot of adhesions, which you're, you're learning to break all of those up, what can happen is the pubic synthesis, the pubic bone, the pubic synthesis can overlap. This is a great technique for opening up and it's going to open up the energy flow and the chi to the whole pelvic region. So what I want you to do is pull your knees as tight as you can together. When he gets, when I feel tension, a slight tug. Many times you'll hear a pop and sometimes it can hurt in the growing area a little bit but no damage. Then you just want to hold and go out and you can get a slight adjustment there too. Did you feel any movement at all in your pelvic bone? And that, that one we usually do it, and usually it's enough. Okay, then I'd like for you just to straighten your legs out. Now this is one they do in Thai massage too, and it's a very simple technique. You take the opposite leg, put the toe under the knee, you're going to bring this over while you're holding the shoulder down. Hey, you already adjusted. See how easy that is? Because he's been worked on for the past few days. What's your name? Ian. Ian. So you can just take it a little further. Now watch my body posture. You know, I'm not over here, so I'm not hurting myself. So you want to have a nice, centered, breathing energy. So take a good deep breath and let it out. And when you get to full extension, you're watching their face to make sure they're not in any pain. Just give a little thrust here. You're holding this here. Sometimes you can do this on the floor too, but you can also put your knee here and just give a little extra thrust that way. Now I also, if I was working on somebody, I would have done a lot of tissue work on the psoas and the whole abdominal um, muscles and probably the legs too and, and such. So this is really a quick approach, but you're doing that through, your, through the work you're learning. So again, you want to just make sure the toes underneath the knee there. Good, there went another one. It's that simple. See, I haven't used any pressure. This is nothing more than a stretch. So again, good deep breath. I'm taking it over to its full, now I can feel that's its full range of motion. We got another one there, right? See? And don't, don't push people too hard. You don't have to. If it doesn't go, it's not ready. You know, work with their body. Work with the, the connection that you have going so you can feel how much that person can truly tolerate and that you're not going to hurt someone. That's the most important part. Okay. Um, okay, I want to show you a little more advanced form of that that you can do, which is very simple. Now, you can do this on the floor on a, um, on a mattress as well. You want to make sure that you're right here on the table so they're not going to fall over. You know, you've got them because you don't want them dropping off the table. You've messed up everything you've done. <laughs> so then again, you're putting the toe behind the knee. Now, you have their head on a pillow. So you have a fairly nice alignment. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you have a fairly nice alignment of the whole spine. You know, the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. So you want to get a little extension here. You're going to bring them over. Look at the triangles I'm creating here. All right? I'm going to come in and through here and create another triangle with his body. And the technique is I'm pretty much just holding here while this elbow is on his pelvis and it's coming over and just stretching. See? And make sure you're not digging your elbow. The old osteopath who's now 98 and still practicing, he used to treat people like this and I hated it. You can use this pad of your arm right here. Lock your fingers. Good deep breath. And see, he's pretty much aligned here, and all I'm stretching, I'm holding here, and I'm just stretching here. And went another one. That way we got a few of the lower thoracic, or they also call them dorsal lumbar as well. Okay. Right, he's right in position. See, they learn quick. <laughs> Especially when they have the energy flowing. So you want to get the toe in behind the knee. Another thing you can do if you have a low table, you can get some nice pressure up here with your knee and get just a little more of a torque there. Good deep breath. And you breathe too whenever they're breathing because you need to keep your energy centered. Okay?
very, very little force. You know, once you've loosened up all the ligaments in there, the spine is going to naturally, it's the innate wisdom of the body that is going to want to align itself. So if you put it into the proper position for it to do so, it's going to go, yay, let's go. Now I want to, uh, two more very simple techniques. This can break up fixations in the thoracic, lumbar, pelvic area here. And what you're going to do, you're going to reach right under the, was PSIS, it's the, the front of the iliac bone here, okay? It's a wonderful handle, you know? I mean, that's to me is what true love handles are, but so you've got it here. What you want to do is you're working, here's the spinous process, the transverse process run right across here. I would have already done an exam and found out where he may have rotations in the vertebrae there. So what you can do is this is just a nice rocking motion where you're getting a little bit of counter resistance. While you're pulling here, you're pushing here. For a lot of people, this can be fairly uncomfortable. So you just want to make sure you're very, very gentle with it. And you're using the palm of hand, pretty much thenar eminence, which is what this pad is called. And you're working right on top of the transverse process, not the spinous. Because you can hurt somebody if you put too much pressure right directly on the spinous process, which is the bulging part this guy right here. Okay, you want to be right here. See, if you push here, there's no telling which direction it's going to go. If you have your thenar eminence right on this transverse process, watch this. Whoop, you did it a while ago. There. <laughs> did it click? So, that can adjust a what's called a posterior subluxation. Okay? And I'm not sure, well let me go ahead and show this to you. So you start right about L1, L2, and you can work all the way up to about T6, 7, and then you go to the other side, and you would do the same. Okay? I want to show you one more, and then real quick I would just like to have a woman come up because I want to show a uterine um, diagnostic point they use in reflex therapy. In the back? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So, I don't know if any of you know this, sometimes you can use like a towel, but I find if I get, use my fingers, now he has a little more flesh. The fleshier they are, more muscular, it's harder to get this kind of adjustment. But um, with somebody smaller, I'll show you again. But you're getting right above the spinous process, and it's okay to get over top of it on here because you're not putting direct pressure and you just want to have just a little bit of loosening. This opens up fixations and circulation in the whole lumbar sacral area, okay? So, see with him it'd be a little more difficult, but you can just roll. And that's going to break up some of the fixations and what's called adhesions and fibrosis of the tissue. Many times that's due to mineral deficiency. That's why the the green formula is so beneficial and why you need it. And so we were talking yesterday about prolapsus of the organs and fallen organs. You have to have minerals in there in order to re re-strengthen them. And that's the key. Most uh, prolapsus and fallen organs is due to mineral deficiency many times. So then you can finish by just putting your hand right on the sacrum. Your finger is down right along the line of the coccyx and just good deep breath. Let me see, let it out. Make sure you're not on the spinous process, you're on the sacrum and let it out. Just a little bit of a thrust and that opens up the sacrum. So the real nice simple techniques. So you find maybe, you know, right at the bottom of the rib cage, you can start there. I found people will adjust all the way up to the mid, mid thoracics here. But, and some people don't like it, and some people love it. It's a love-hate relationship you can have with this technique. But what I'm doing basically is I'm finding the spinous process, and I'm getting right over it, fingers together, and I'm just lifting. And many times you'll hear pop after pop after pop. Some chiropractors say that you're actually adjusting the, um, the lumbar vertebrae with it. I think it's just breaking fixations. Now, 
As I mentioned, there's a uterine point, a reflex point, it's called Chapman's reflex point for the uterus. And you find the top of the, of the iliac bone here, the iliac crest, and you're going to come in and you can go right next to the transverse process. Well, she, you have a little bit of a reflex there. Is that a little tender? It's nice tender. Nice tender, good. And you can come on the other side in the same. Any tenderness there? Yeah, that's a nice tender. Nice tender. <laughs> and after it's just a diagnostic point and it's it's very general. You know, I mean you can't say, hey, you've got uterine problems because that's a reflex that's very tender. But you can pretty much, when you're just working these, you can get an idea if there's going to be some problem in their uterus. So, anyway. Good. Transverse is here. It's going to pull and tug on all of the aorta, the vena cava, all of those are going to get strengthened because they have this extra weight here or the fallen organs from mineral deficiency and not enough exercise, it's going to be pulling and tugging on them. So the more you get this up, as Master Chia mentioned, the slant board and pulling the bladder up, you always have to get that bladder up. Many ovarian cancers, uh, uterine cancers, fibroids, it's that block in circulation. It's the fallen organs. When you have the bowels and they haven't been cleaned out by colonics down on top of the uterus and the ovaries, what are you going to get? You're going to get a constant flow of toxins in there. What does toxin create? It creates cancer. You know, cancer is really nothing more than toxins feeding the terrain um, to, to bring about the, the cancer tumors and such, and they're usually encapsulating. So what can happen many times, particularly in women, and this is the, the source of so many problems from dysmenorrhea, amenorrhea, conception problems, fertility problems, cancers, fibroids, um, every type of menstrual irregularity there is, we've corrected thousands, and the work you're doing will correct this because you're going in and you're releasing the adhesions and the fibrosis of the tissue that's keeping it from getting, being in its normal position. You know, it could have come from this, it could have come from sexual repression, you know, holding back, I mean, you know what that is, it could have come from abuse when they were a child. There's so many conditions or, or situations that can lead to this problem. Now, what the old man, the, old, the young, old 90, 90 year young doctor I used to work with, would um, basically say he's never seen a normal positioned uterus, and that's why this work is so valuable for women in particular. What happens is the top can be tilted over, and that's called antiversion, correct, doctor? And that can put pressure on the bladder. That's why when you're doing, is your bladder okay? This bladder, you're very tight. Isn't you? Take a good deep breath and let it out. Just relax your abdomen in there. Scoop it and bring it up like Master Chi showed yesterday. And you can really release a lot of the adhesions here and, and, and resolve a lot of cystitis, chronic cystitis. Okay? But particularly, what, when you're doing this uterine work, you're going to be taking off the adhesions and the fibrosis of the tissue which is pulling it out of place. It can be antiverted, it can be retroverted back practically into the rectum, it can be practically flipped, it can be flexion, and uh, it can have all of the above except antiversion and, and uh, retroversion. So it can be uh, retroverted and flexed. And you know, how can a normal circulation happen through that? So the work you're doing is... Blocked. Yeah, totally blocked. And of course, if it's out of position, it's pulling and tugging on either the ovarian or the broad ligaments. You're pulling on the ovarian ligaments, and what happens? You're going to block a lot of the hormonal flow. You know, I mean, this can prevent, what you're doing can prevent thousands upon thousands of hysterectomies. In most cases, if you catch somebody before it's, you know, extreme cancer or something of that nature, you can correct all of that. And a woman doesn't have to give up, you know, that part of her body. It's crazy what's going on with all the hysterectomies. They're not necessary. Ninety-five, maybe ninety-nine percent of cases. If they knew what to do to correct it, like you're doing.
So, but one thing I want to say about that, when you have stress from the fallen organs or it being out of place, it can pull and tug on the ovarian ligaments. And when that ovary is being pulled and tugged on, it's not going to work properly, right? I mean, anytime you're pulling or stretching something that's not in place, how's it going to function? How's it going to get the life force flowing in there? So you're just opening up, you know, the chi and the life force to get it going. That's just some more techniques you can do. And there's nothing better than the abdominal work because that's where so many people hold. You know, they're just not getting the energy in there.